evening and welcome to the evening news for today, Thursday, October 27, 2022. I am Jemima Holmes. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's take a look at some of our lead stories tonight. ICJ to hear submissions on Venezuela's objections to border case next month. Guyana ranked second in Caribbean, 35th in world for gender equality. Farmer suffers major losses after 53 heads of sheep disappear. Anson McCall opens U.S. 2 million facility at Palmyra. And cops must pursue domestic violence cases, even if victims refuse, says the minister. Now for the news in detail. The International Court of Justice will next month be hearing submissions from both Guyana and Venezuela on the Spanish-speaking nation's objections to the border controversy case in which Guyana is seeking a final and binding judgment to ascertain its territorial boundaries. Here is Vanu Manichand with our lead story tonight. After refusing to join the proceedings before the World Court since 2018, Venezuela finally participated in the border controversy case months ago and filed an objection that has delayed the substantive hearing. They submitted preliminary objections to the admissibility of the case before the ICJ in June. Now, the World Court has invited both Guyana and Venezuela to make submissions on those objections. According to Guyana's agent on the case, Carl Greenwich, those hearings have been set for November 17 to 22nd. The oral presentation will allow uh the court to hear venezuelan venezuela's um objections to the mem to the well to the memorial in the sense that they're saying that the memorial isn't properly before the court and uh, that is what it will be about and we will of course when that is finished return to the substantive issue of what are the merits and demerits of the original complaint from Guyana, namely that the court should pronounce on the uh, status of the 1899 award, whether or not it's valid and what all the things that follow from it. Already, the Guyana government has described this move by Venezuela as a bid to delay the substantial hearing of the 1899 arbitral award case in which Guyana is seeking legal affirmation that its Essequibo region, which contains much of the country's natural resources, belongs to Guyana and not Venezuela. Venezuela is laying claims to more than two-thirds of Guyana's land mass and a portion of its exclusive economic zone in which almost 11 billion barrels of oil have been discovered over the past seven years and oil production activities are ongoing. Back in September, President Ali had reiterated Guyana's commitment to a peaceful resolution of the border controversy, which had caused some unease in Caracas, and the Nicolas Maduro regime renewed its spurious claims of Guyana's territory. This sparked a widespread public campaign in Guyana, with many local officials and stakeholders sharing a map of Guyana to declare that everything within the country's border is we own. Moreover, the Foreign Affairs Ministry has also reached out to major social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter requesting that they remove posts made by a number of Spanish language social media accounts claiming Guyana's territory by publishing illegal maps. Reporting for the Evening News, Fanu Manikchand. Guyana has been favorably ranked in the Global Gender Gap Report 2022, being placed 35th out of 146 countries and second in the Caribbean for reducing gender inequality. Vanu Manichan joins us again to report that Governance and Parliamentary Affairs Minister Gil Teixeira says this is reflective of the many initiatives implemented by the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration to enhance gender equality in the country. Produced by the Switzerland-based World Economic Forum, the Global Gender Gap Report 2022 gives Guyana a score of 0.752, an improvement from the 0.024 index score obtained last year. This places Guyana at 
35, with the only Caribbean country above it being Barbados. But in the entire Latin America and Caribbean region, Guyana is ranked number 6. The report notes that in Guyana, men and women have near equal rights when it comes to access to financial services as well as access to land and non-land assets. Meanwhile, there are equal rights to inheritances for widows and daughters. When it comes to education and skills, there were only three categories where more men than women existed in the workforce agriculture, forestry, fisheries, and veterinary services, in which there are 38.2% women compared to 61.7% men. In ICT, 73% of the workforce are men and 26.5% are women. And in engineering, manufacturing, and construction, men account for 77.6% of the workforce and women, 22.5%. 3%. However, in health and welfare, the report lists women as the majority with 84.4% and men with 15.5%, while education has a workforce of 88.5% women and 11.4% men. Business, administration, and law has 68.7% female and 31.2% male. Then in arts and humanities, the workforce is 89.6% female and 10.3% male. Women also account for 81.7% in the social services, journalism, and information sectors, compared to 18.2% male. The natural sciences, mathematics, and statistics sectors have 53.3% female and 46.6% male. According to the report, Guyana is among the Latin American and Caribbean countries that improve its gender parity scores the most. Guyana was also named as one of the nations in which the parity has increased among workers in senior roles by at least 10 percentage points. Speaking on the country's ranking, Governance and Parliamentary Affairs Minister Gail Teixeira said this shows an accumulative progress by Guyana in terms of gender equality. Obviously helps by the President Ali's programs um, that have been, been coming at us at a terrific speed. In the program that he wants to start, I think, on Friday of Men and yeah, Women, the Mission, the Thousand Men, the thousand men to try to deal with what... Uh, clearly social problems where, where men are actually lagging behind or males are actually lagging behind in dropouts and things like that. But at the same time, and, and social problems and violence, that these are problems that we don't look at, um, we look at them very narrowly. But if we look at these things as collective, in a collective manner, the WIN program, the GOAL program with the online scholarships, the um, what do you call micro business and loans and things yeah. like that, the housing program, these are all in a sense cumulatively uh, improving the quality of life. Yeah. And in fact, because we don't discriminate in Guyana between women and men and say that women can't do this, it automatically, and, and women, as a woman, women are much more ambitious anyway. Reporting for The Evening News, Fanu Manak Chand. Cattle rustling continues to be a major problem faced by farmers in Region 6. Our Burbies correspondent, Andrew Carmichael, shares this story of a quarantine farmer who has vented his frustration over the situation, having recently lost 53 heads of sheep, a significant blow to his livelihood. Here are the details. Odal Budram, a cattle farmer of number 55 Village Quarantine, Region 6, East Burbies Quarantine, said up to Sunday night he had 62 heads of sheep. He said on Monday when he went to the savannah where he had left his animals, he only found 10 of them. I have started from the whole area where the sheep didn't graze, and couldn't find the sheep. When I come, I have observed like about 10 young ones, like them pick out the big sheep them and left the kitty for suck. The kitty suck from the mother and I carry all the big sheep them, 53, 53 head of me check. He has since made a report to the police. Budram, who also has 20 goats and 15 heads of cattle, which he keeps in the savannah in the backlands of number 56 village, says this is not the first time he has lost sheep as a result of theft. And this thing 
set back me a lot because I'm leaving for me to walk now. I'm leaving for this animal to get something out of them because I spent over a million dollars on the sheep there. Can we buy the sheep for 20,000 here? And if I 53, I check the money how much. I owe over a million dollars in sheep alone. Oh. Couldn't find back none until now. How long are um, you doing the sheep business? Over three, four years now. You ever had losses like this? Any losses? No, on the big flood I had like about thought the same had been dead on the flood. A person ever came to steal from you before? Yes, one time I got 11 right here to me already. 11 here. Last March again, I buy five alls and caught tongue and bring and come for milk. Let me now walk to milk and milk and cows and get all the money out of them. Cow cost me 1.5 for each house. When the PX spent something for bring and come. Bring and come, the man got all five. That March again. And now they go over a million dollars in worth of sheep for me. I don't know what to do now, what, what to turn to now. Cattle rustling and theft of small ruminants has been one of the major issues affecting animal farmers in the upper quarantine. Well, next buy, they will call them by a rule by a 50 day. Call them by. That buy is mine to me, he is mine to get a he. And he has last one, one, two, two, but it never lasts like, like this. He. Apart from this, Farmers also have to deal with attacks by jaguars, pythons and alligators and even dogs which go to the savannah to feast on the newly born. However, Woodram strongly believes his missing animals were the victims of theft. It's not a white animal, it's somebody come pick them up at night and carry them, thief them, they call them thief. Because they don't left this area here. When we come, they come through right here, we come up on the bridge here. Come you see all, tell you come on the sun hat, all left from Canada, sit down, all the pain there, all under the sheet and sit down, they're not going to weep on here. Because four, three, four years down the here, this area, he doesn't know he good. Then I move on here. Only recently, police officials in the region said they would be paying more attention to cattle rustling and had promised results before the end of October. This was after farmers had complained that the law enforcement officers seemed inept in dealing with the situation. Since that promise was made, three persons, including a butcher from New Amsterdam, were placed before the court on related charges. Andrew Carmichael, The Evening News. More than 30 farmers on the west coast of Burbies, Region 5, have received titles to their lands. Andrew Carmichael joins us again to report that some of them had applied almost two decades ago. Here's more. The land titles were handed over to farmers at the Mahaika Maikonia Bari Agricultural Development Authority, MMA ADA, Open Day, held on Thursday. The Open Day allowed for both MMA and stakeholders to take stock of what has been done over the past year. This is according to Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa. The Agriculture Minister noted that apart from modernizing the way agriculture is done, it has to be done in a special way, taking into account shifts and in demand, and more importantly, climatic changes. We have to increase also the stakeholder in the agriculture sector. If you look around in the sector, you're having more mature age people doing agriculture now. We have to encourage young people to get involved into agriculture. Many young people who went to the um, University of Guyana would have graduated, have a degree in agriculture, graduated in agronomy, but they are not doing agriculture. They are just behind a desk doing clerical work. We have to change that. The minister pointed out that the focus has to be on adding value to crops. Hence, government has been encouraging farmers to get into high value crops like carrot, broccoli and cauliflower. Last year, Guyan imported $2.6 billion in those crops. Mustafa also spoke of the importance of agro-processing. That is why we are building agro-processing facilities around the country, not only in Georgetown and places like an, the National Packaging Plant in, in Sofia, but this year alone, we will be building and opening by the end of December six new agro-processing facilities across this country, places like Region 9, Region 10, Watuka, Charity and their secure coast, Blackbush Polar, Fort Wellington. Those are areas that we have already have the building and, and now they are putting in the lines so that farmers can take their produce there and add value to it. Very important, the minister pointed out, more land needs to go on the cultivation. He also said there must be improvement in production and a reduction in production cost. This, he said, is being done by introducing new varieties and species to a product. All the wealth that we have came from agriculture. And we have to ensure that we keep it and we modernize it, we increase production and we enlarge this sector. If we can develop our sector, if we can have our farmers more responsive to the needs of the country, to the needs of the region, then we will be food secure. We will be food secure. 
That is why I'm happy, very happy here today to be at this function to ensure that we hand over some of the leases that farmers would have applied for years ago. For the evening news, Andrew Carmichael. Coming up, Guyana achieved 98% polio vaccine coverage in 2021, and Hamilton condemns opposition's claims of discrimination at co-op societies. Do stay with us. More news ahead. non-threatening voice to explain things they are too lazy to set up traditionally. Only two months into the semester. Marcus, I was watching that. What's the matter with you? Noreen, why you have all these things plugged in, man? You really don't check them bills, you know? You know the cost of electricity? Marcus, you can't be so ridiculous. That's the fridge. Why would you unplug the fridge? I don't understand why the cost of electricity is so high in this country, man. Somebody has to do something. Marcus, you know what I realize? Something is really wrong with you. How are we supposed to live without electricity? Hello, just like our ancestors survived back in the days. I will have you know, Marcus, Noreen Angela Melville is not cut out for that type of life. And already the ninth Ivy League squad buzz with future Olympians and presidents. Hmm. Within Did you know the gas to energy project is expected to reduce the cost of electricity by up to 50%? <gasps> yes, that project will slash electricity bills in half. This will also unleash a tsunami of benefits for the manufacturing sector in Guyana. Wow. Marcos, did you hear that? Electricity will be cheaper. Now, Marcus, for the love of God, plug the fridge back in. For the admissions brochure. Travel girl, you won't believe. <gasps> Sorry, I'm interrupting y'all. Mala, I'm here taking the census. Girl, you all done got a husband already, huh? Miss, I am a census taker going door to door so that everyone can be interviewed and counted in the National Census 2022. What is the census though? Well, the Population and Housing Census is a count of the population and all the buildings every 10 years. Getting counted transforms an entire nation. From Region 1 to Region 10. You know what? I believe our village needs a health center. I think it needs some roads too. You see the man boots out there, how it full of mud, eh? <laughs> That's why I'm asking Mrs. De Silva a few questions from our questionnaire. We record the answers and then the data is used to help shape the future of the country. Oh, so the two of y'all not... Oh, gosh. We... At John Lewis Styles, we carry only first quality, men's and women's clothing, footwear, and accessories. As authorized dealers, our items come directly from the manufacturing brands and are available in all sizes and colors. What we sell was never on display in another store. It's time you know the truth about what you buy. Come visit us on Waterloo Street. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Premier. Premier insurance coverage for less. Stay safe. <laughs> Premier. Premier insurance coverage for less. Stay safe.
Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News. Continuing to express its confidence in the Burby's economy, the Ansa Macau Group of Companies today opened at Palmyra a new multi-purpose facility which would be used as its main office for the county. Andrew Carmichael reports that the company will now be making more services available in Region 6 as a result of this investment. Let's have a look. As Ansa Macau approaches its 30th year of operations in Guyana, its presence in Burby's is also approaching that milestone. Over the years, Ansa McCall has been renting facilities to operate out of. In fact, the company acquired real estate 14 years ago, but continued to operate out of rented facilities in New Amsterdam. Managing Director Paul Cadogan, speaking at the opening ceremony of the two million US dollar Palmaria facility, explained that Burbis has played a big role in the company's existence in Guyana. The title is actually right for us to actually invest in owning our own home in Burbis. This will expand the location not only caters for all of the Asimov businesses in Guyana, what it does is also give our staff a more comfortable uh, environment. The new facility will provide employment for 56 people and will feature a huge warehouse and will be the main outlet for Guyana Beverage Inc. Suzuki Showroom and Answer Building Solutions, which is a subsidiary of Pentacolor Shop. The new outlet at Palmaria is where a host of developmental activities are taking place, including a call center and a business center for persons living with disabilities. A mall, hospital, and stadium are also planned for that section of Burbis. We are happy that Ansa Mokal has moved to this facility and has shown the confidence in the Morbis economy and the new Guyana economy as a whole as it pertains to their investment. Um, you know what is going on in Guyana as the government of Guyana and the private sector in collaboration have been working extremely hard to market the opportunities that are available across the sectors in Guyana. And we have seen tremendous response and we are very happy for people like Hans Mukal who was here using their experience in the market before to expand before any of those new customers come into or new investors actually come into the market. That was Vice President of the Private Sector Commission, Ryan Alexander, who is also the President of the Burbish Chamber of Commerce and Development Association. That opportunity to offer over a thousand pounds would be fantastic for the construction industry person to come in and have a choice of the color that they would like to see. Andrew Carmichael, The Evening News. Guyana's elimination of the polio virus for many years has been a result of robust actions in the vaccination of children and nailing high coverage targets across the country. This was according to Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony on Thursday as World Polio Day was celebrated. Rubasin Ryan tells us more. In 2021, there was a remarkable 98% coverage of polio vaccination in the country. Previously in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic saw a drop to 91%. In 2018 and 2019, coverage stood at 94% and 97% respectively. In 2019, IPV2 vaccines were also introduced, showing 97% coverage, 91% in 2020 and 97% in 2021. So I think um, for both IPV1 um, and IPV2, um, at 98 and 97%, uh, that's very extensive coverage and we'll continue to maintain those numbers. We have actually eliminated polio. We don't see polio cases here and that's because we have a very robust uh, vaccination program. So uh, in 2017, for example, using the IPV vaccine type 1, uh, we had 94% coverage. 
A trivalent vaccine targeting type 1, type 2 and type 3 of the polio virus was initially used to vaccinate persons. However, with the elimination of type 2 polio came the introduction of a bivalent vaccine targeting only the two circulating types. Instead of oral polio vaccines for children, Guyana also made a switch to using the inactivated vaccine, which is typically injected. This change came amid recommendations that continued usage of the oral vaccines may not generate the same efficacy. We have made that switch, so this is something that is recommended by the WHO. And we have made that switch, and we did that in 2016. Uh, so 2016, um, we start switching out from oral polio vaccines to now the inactivated vaccine type 1 and type 2. And, um, and so far, we have been quite successful uh, in terms of administering these vaccines. And I must say we are one of the first countries, uh, perhaps in the Caribbean and in the Americas, who have made this switch. Polio is a life-threatening disease that can affect the brain and spinal cord. It can also cause paralysis or even death. Rupa Sinarine, The Evening News. Minister of Human Services and Social Security, Dr. Vindia Persaud, has said that officers of the Guyana Police Force must be mandated to pursue cases of domestic violence, even if victims refuse to go against their perpetrators. Find out more in this Bisham Mohammed report. The Ministry of Human Services and Social Security is amending the Domestic Violence Act of 1966 to impose stringent measures to curb gender-based violence. The legislation recently was out for national consultation to address gaps and to strengthen the legislation. We are considering a renaming the Family and Domestic Violence Act or the Family Violence Act merely because the current act speaks to a few relationships. But when we say family, this, uh, this really encourages protection of more persons within a family. She noted that the new law will be crafted to include best practices from around the world. We are looking at how it can be very progressive, very modern, but also very protective because we're not allowing too much of subjectivity when it comes to how you deal with domestic violence. But this is not a piece of legislation that will stand on its own. It will have to be in accordance with other legislation like the Bail Act and so that we can have the punitive measures and a big component of this is rehab of the perpetrators. So people will have to be rehabbed. It's making things very much a part of what people must do remedially and not just leaving people to the wilderness. So which means naturally that we will be developing programs for that and that's something that will come on stream next year. In this regard, Minister Passat said police officers will be mandated to pursue cases of domestic abuse even if the victims refuse to. We know there is an age-old problem where people might report domestic violence and when police go, it depends on if the person says they want to pursue or it depends on what the police will do at that time. Once they see evidence of serious bodily harm, you have to. And we will, we will also be looking at other big areas in terms of the roles of people when reports are made. In September, Minister Prasad revealed that there are 40 proposed amendments to the RTEC law. Amendments will see the insertion of some forms of abuse including economic, emotional and psychological violence and the updating of penalties for breach of protection orders. Bisham Mohammed, Evening News. Labor Minister Joseph Hamilton has denounced claims by leader of the opposition, Aubrey Norton, that racial discrimination is being practiced at co-op societies. Here are the details from Rupa Sinarine. In a recent press conference, opposition leader Aubrey Norton claimed that the co-op societies across the country are experiencing racism from the central government. He drew attention to the Maka Arcadia Multipurpose Agricultural Co-op Society, alleging that the co-op is not receiving a subvention from the government. However, Labor Minister Joseph Hamilton sought to put these claims to rest on Wednesday. The interaction at the level of the government with co-op societies is done by the Chief Co-op Development Officer, which is a statutory position, uh, not a political position, that is governed by laws and procedures. And as far as I know, the government um, 
has no relationship as regards transferring subvention to the Co-op Society. Hamilton outlined that the case of transfer of funds by the International Decade of People of African Descent, Assembly Guyana, without reference to the Co-op Department of the Ministry of Labor, is a breach. I suspect that the Vincent Alexander outfit was transferring monies to the Moko um, Co-op Society because I, uh, in Mr. Alexander articulation, I think he mentioned something about uh, they were uh, funding or sponsoring agricultural development and they were funding and sponsoring the market day that they normally have at weekend. This transfer of funds from the Alexander outfit, IPADAGI, it was done with no reference to the co-op department and that's a breach. Because before a co-op society can uh, access a grant, a loan, a subvention, whatever, the reference point to begin with, it is a co-op department. So again, um, in their attempt, uh, they are breaching all the rules and regulations as regards the transfer of funds. Meanwhile, Minister Hamilton recalled that President Dr. Irfan Ali was recently in Mecca, where commitments were made to assist residents in agriculture. So this stupidity and this idiocy about uh, discrimination, I'm sure um, I read the Minister of Agriculture committing acreage of lands to the Mecca farmers for development. and that access, road access, and drainage and irrigation that is coming out of the president visit of which they made some, re some um, recommendations and some requests. So where is this discrimination? And now for a look at the bridge reports. There will be no closure of the Demarara Harbor Bridge on Friday, October 28th. Meanwhile, the Burbies River Bridge is scheduled to be closed on Friday, October 28th at 6 hours for a period of one and a half hours. President Ali set stage for better treatment of Guyanese athletes and Guyana Harpy Eagles arrive in TNT for Regional Super 50. Details of these stories and more in this podcast sponsored by MacCorp coming up on the other side of the break. Hi, my name is Jiren Safwi, and I'm very excited to have GTT set up this fiber cable. As you can see, I'm young, so I will be using this uh, Wi-Fi, this internet, to be doing my everyday browsing and searching and, you know, just my homework and assignments, playing games, watching YouTube, you know, the regular stuff. Um, I really enjoy the service. I think it's extremely great, and you also have, like, the free minutes so for that, you know, if you're in trouble, you call your parents or someone. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Channel girl, you won't be... <gasps> Sorry, I'm interrupting y'all. Mala, I'm here taking the census. Girl, you all done got a husband already, huh? Miss. I am a census taker, going door to door so that everyone can be interviewed and counted in the National Census 2022. What is the census though? Well, the Population and Housing Census is a count of the population and all the buildings every 10 years. Getting counted transforms an entire nation. From Region 1 to Region 10. You know what? I believe our village needs a health center. I think it needs some roads too. You see the man boots out there, how it's full of mud, eh? 
That's why I'm asking Mrs. De Silva a few questions for more questioning. We record the answers and then the data is used to help shape the future of the country. Oh, so the two y'all not... Oh gosh. We Looking to bring your dream home to reality? Or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1,000 Berger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Sotco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhymeville. Moving, lifting, or bending, whatever the job, we at Sylvie's Variety Store have the right tools to make it happen. Pallet jacks and hand trucks for bonds and industrial sites, easy pickup and convenient maneuvers. Chain hoist from Roughneck and Northern Industrial, the perfect solution to lifting heavy objects. And then there's the 12-ton and 16-ton hydraulic pipe benders from half to two inch. We also stock the shop press machine from Northern Industrial. Sylvie's Variety Store stocks the tools to make it happen.